Number 11. A runner taking part in the 200 meter dash must run around the end of a track that has a circular arc with a radius of curvature of 30 meters. If he completes the 200 meter dash in 23.2 seconds and runs at a constant speed throughout the race, what is the magnitude of his centripetal acceleration as he runs the curved portion of the track? All right. So in a problem like this, um, I like to, the strat one strategy I like to employ is I like to begin with the question. All right. So the question is, they're asking me, what is the magnitude of his centripetal acceleration? So once I identify that they're asking me for this variable in physics, I now start to think about equations that have this variable in it. Now I notice that there are two that are handy, right? It's this formula over here on the right and this one. All right, so the question might be, well, which one should I start with? So this takes a little bit of foresight and thinking ahead, but it's not a lot, you know, by any means it's not that hard, right? They're giving us radius, uh, radii. Well, they're giving us a radius, not, not, not multiple radii, but they're giving us a radius they're also giving us some distances and times and whatnot. So more than likely, right, we're going to be using this formula to start um, due to the fact that it has a radius in it, okay, and this one doesn't. So that's the formula I'm going to use to start. So I have the centripetal acceleration is equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by radius. Okay, so now my focus goes away from this, and now it turns to these variables. Do I know them? Yes, I do know the radius. They gave me that of this part of the uh, uh, track, right? And sorry, I was just thinking about something moving ahead. And um, I don't know the tangential velocity. Okay, so my attention now turns to this. What formulas do I know have a tangential velocity in them and are trying to then relate them to either radii or... Uh, you know, uh, what do we got? Time, we got a distance or a time, whatever the case is, right? I'm thinking probably this formula over here, right? How this formula relates velocity, tangential velocity to radius. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this term on in for my velocity. So now this becomes centripetal acceleration is equal to radius times angular velocity squared all over the radius. Let's distribute the square basically, and let's cancel some terms because I see I can cancel some things, right? That squared goes away, the r on the bottom goes away, so now I have centripetal acceleration is equal to r, oop, I forgot the square there, right? r times omega squared. Okay, great. So now, do I know r? Yes, I do. And do I know omega? No, I don't. They didn't tell me the angular velocity. Okay, so now what am I gonna do? What do you think? Now I'm going to look to formulas, right, that have angular velocity in them and look to see if I can plug in those values and if those values have some relationship to the problem, that, that is key. So I realize that angular uh, velocity is also found in this equation and I realize it's related to, right, radians and time. Oh wait, they did give me a time. So more than likely, I can take this equation now and plug it in and that should help me. Okay, so let's do that. So now I have Centripetal acceleration is equal to r times now radians, change in radians over change in time, squared, right? Because I'm just plugging it in for omega. All right. So now I say to myself, okay, well, oop, I noticed one thing. I put r here, but it should be, I put r for radian, but I meant to put theta, right? So now I'm thinking to myself, well, I know r, I know time. Oh, man, I don't know the radians. They didn't tell me anything about radians. Okay, guess what I'm going to do now? Now I'm going to look for a formula with theta in it and radians in it and see if I can now substitute that into my equation, right? Maybe there's something in the radian equation up here on the right-hand side that has other variables in the problem. And I notice, look at this. What does this say? Delta S, right? What does that stand for? Change in what? What is the S? Well, the S basically stands for displacement, but it stands for something specific. It stands for circular displacement, okay? Meaning the displacement traveled along the arc of a circle. Ah, so that might be very handy. So let me take this now and plug it in for theta. All right. See, it's just, it's just a plug-in game here. It's kind of like a little bit of a puzzle. Now, for theta now, it becomes change in that uh, arc displacement divided by the radius. Okay, all divided by now, 
the change in time squared. Now we ask ourselves, okay, great. Do we know these numbers? Do we, can we finally solve? I know the radius, right? That's 30. Okay. I know the time. They told me it was 23 seconds, 23.2 seconds. Again, I know the radius. I just said that. And the, uh, the distance it traveled on the arc. Do I know that? And you might say, yeah, I do. I do know 20, uh, excuse me, 200. And we'd be fine if you did that. But there is one subtlety to this question, and it actually doesn't matter if you do it either way because proportionally you get the same value. But just think about this. A, technically, as I have here in my picture, this is a 200-meter race. It starts at this location, ends over here. This arc is 100 meters, okay? And then this straight path is 100 meters, okay? So what that really means is that I need to then... All right, plug this in. So let me now start plugging in some numbers. So if I think about actually what a 200 meter uh, dash is all about, I'm going to now start plugging in some numbers. And the radius is the radius of curvature here, which is 30. So that's not a problem. Times then the um, arc distance, which was 100. Okay, 100. All over the radius again, which was 30. Okay, divided now by the time. Now be careful here. Remember, the whole 200 meters, it took this person 23.2 seconds to run it, but they ran at a constant speed throughout. So therefore, I can take that and divide it by two, right, to find the time it just took to go the 100. All right, so that should make sense. So I'm just going to actually plug that in here. I'm going to write 23.2, divide that by two. Okay, and now we'll get our answer. Just square it. Now watch. Let's plug this all in, okay? So let's do 100 divided by 30. So get about 3.33, right? And I'll take that value and divide it. Be careful with your parentheses. Divide by 23.2 divided by 2. Okay, so we get about 0.287. Now square that value, 0 0.0825 or 26, and then take that and multiply it by 30. So we get a final value here of 2.48, 2.48. Oops, 2.48 meters per second squared, right? For our centripetal acceleration. So here we go. Here it is. That is the answer, okay? But like I said, in case you didn't do it this way or realize that it's talking about the 200 meter dash in this way and you thought maybe that this whole path was 200 meters at the top instead of 100, your answer wouldn't have changed. Why? Because look, this 100 would have become a 200. But the time here, you would not have divided by 2, right? You would, you would have just left at 23.2 then. So get rid of this, okay? Now, if you made your calculation, it would have been the same thing, okay? The, the number will come out exactly the same, right? So 200 divided by 30, then take that answer and divide it now by 23.2, and then square it. And then multiply it by 30, and you get 2.48. All right? So I'm just going to backtrack there just to leave the work here. But again, it doesn't matter in this problem. In case you uh, were a little confused maybe about the setup, it wouldn't have mattered. But this is really how you'd want to think about it in the actual 200-meter uh, dash. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe, and I will help you with the next question. Take care.